Wow. Um, just <laughs> first thoughts about the game last night, man. Um, it looks like the exact same team, man. It really does, man. It looks like the exact same team. Only worse, man. Because <laughs> didn't they beat Nebraska last year? <laughs> Wait a second, man. They worse, man. This is a worse version of last year's team, man. <laughs> God, dog, man. Um, and Sh Shador wasn't throwing pick sixes last year, man. Um, this one right here, though, they're blaming the play caller. Some people are. I just don't understand, man, how you throw that here to a rookie, like uh, a, a freshman. He doesn't fight for the ball. That's something where maybe Travis or somebody, yeah, they they fight for that ball. They don't wait for it. They don't, you know, they go attack it at the point of attack. You know what I'm saying? Um, but regardless, you, you're the one throwing it. You know who's out there. You know that ain't Travis. You know that ain't the other dude from Vanderbilt. And then you threw it late, regardless. Whoever was out there, unless he ran his route too deep. But if he ran the right route, let's see, girl. <laughs> if you want to divvy up the blame, if you want to say, hey, man, it's a group thing, man. Everybody's to blame. You can give the play caller some, 5%, because if I'm Shadow and I see that, I, I'm smoking that over his head or I'm coming here. But he can't come here because Seton got beat. And Seton's a freshman. Seton's a freshman. And also, they're in the end zone. He's a freshman. He got beat. Yeah, he got beat on that play. Maybe. So, yeah, you can't. Shador's, and it looks like he's looking here the whole time. Travis is covered in the slot. I mean, listen. I didn't like the call. I didn't like the throw. I didn't like the effort of the receiver. I didn't like nothing Seven about this play. Yards deep. Let's see. Go to the sideline. Dag on shame, man. And we got Whitlock here, man. He says Shador Sanders appears to blame freshman receiver Draylon Miller for the pick six. Miller was the intended target of Sanders' pass. The pick, the pick six early on, how much do you think that impacted the rest of the game? A lot. It was just, you know, a rookie mistake, honestly. That's what it was. So it, it, it's small things like that that kind of like things that we that just can't happen, you know, like truthfully. But uh, stuff happens, so we just got to bounce back from it and learn from that situation and uh, just be ready for it. Yeah, man, I, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like him blaming the rookie, the freshman. They rookies now. They this is pro football. Everybody's getting paid, so um, might as well call him a rookie. Um, yeah, it, that didn't feel right to me. It didn't like. When he said it, it just didn't feel good. Um, it didn't feel right, yeah. Um, <laughs> Skip 
Let's see what Skip got to say, man. Man, was I ever wrong today about Dion and Colorado winning at Nebraska. But I'm not going to be wrong about Shadur Sanders. He's going to be the best quarterback in the next draft, and he is going to change somebody's life in the National Football League. Obviously, we got same song, second verse for Colorado this year. They cannot protect Shadur Sanders. I thought Jordan Seaton, the best left tackle of all the freshmen, would solidify the offensive line, and it was horrendous again today, early on, disaster, nightmare. Shadur made one big mistake. He threw the flat pass pick six interception that broke the game open for Nebraska. They were spoiling to get even for what happened last year at Colorado. I was wrong about that, but I'm going to be right about Shadur. He showed me again such toughness, such grit. You give him a split second to set his feet and throw, and he throws laser rockets. He is deadly accurate. I love his football character, his football backbone. I love his strength. I love his ability to get loose and escape, roll out, make sensational throws on the run. This young man is going to be something at the next level, but the rest of this year at this level, it's going to be a long, hard time, and I just pray for the young man's health. He lost his brother Shiloh to a broken forearm. He got hit in the head late. I just hope he stays upright for the next of this year and makes it to the draft. So, yeah, I think everything Skip said was true. I mean, like, yeah, he's a – I think he's a big time prospect. I mean, that line, man, God. His his football backbone. I don't know about his football backbone. There's some questions there about Shador's character. Um, and not like he's, you know, off the field problems. I mean, he's a great kid in that respect. He's just got a lot of um, braggadocio that I don't like. I would, you know, he's got a lot of um, deflecting I don't like. But he's a young kid, man. I mean, this <laughs> prism, this magnifying glass that his father's put on him from his father's fame has been a blessing and a and a curse, man. So uh, we looking at him a lot harder than we do any other quarterback. But they're like getting there, like, yo, do you be, do you understand that the in the last what ten games they're one in they've won one. Yo, they won one of the no, they won two of the last what eleven games. They won two of the last eleven games. And one of them was against the FBS school. Arizona State. And that was at a last second field goal. So if Mata would have Mata like he did yesterday, they only win. <laughs> Since Colorado State, the rivalry game last year, the only win would be against the FBF school, FCS school. Yo. You got to win some games, dog. You got to do John Elway with the Denver. Listen, let me tell you something. Shador, man, you got to go John Elway, man. John Elway, when I was growing up, he was one of the biggest quarterbacks out there. Probably the biggest. Marino, Montana, but 
he took teams. I'm talking about they had these group of receivers called the uh, Three Amigos. They couldn't have started on any other team in the league. I mean, they were they weren't terrible, but they weren't they they weren't all all pros. They were just regular. They were Jags, midget Jags. Ricky Natil, uh, Mark Jackson, and Vance Johnson, I think. And this is before Shannon Sharp came along, before Terrell Davis came along. I didn't even think this is before Steve Atwater. No, I think they had Steve Atwater. But um, well, I'm sure it's in the Hall of Fame. I got to check that. But um, they had a bunch of Jags. Sammy Winder. <laughs> they had a bunch of Jags, man. Um, and it was just him, man. And, man, they were not a Super Bowl. They were not the type of team to get to a Super Bowl. They were the type of team where 8-8 eight and eight would have been a – that roster – let me say roster. They were the type of roster where 8-8 eight and eight would have been a um, a feat. They had that type of roster. They had an 8-8 eight and eight ceiling roster. They had some good players here. They had Tom Jackson and whatnot and da-da-da-da. Their safeties were lead footed. I mean, they had the two slowest safeties in the league. Um, I can't name another. I mean, they're lying with there's a couple guys here and there, right? But uh, a straight up eight and eight ceiling roster. He took them to three Super Bowls. Well, of course, they got obliterated in each one of them. I mean, they got destroyed each time it was worse. I think they lost by 19, then they lost by 32, then they lost by 45. <laughs> like, it was like it got worse every time. But to, to, taking them to three Super Bowls in four years, I think is still one of the greatest feats that roster in football history. And again, before Terrell Davis and Shannon Sharp came along, Hall of Fame players on the offensive end, offensive side. Before Rod Smith and Easy Ed McCaffrey, too, two great receivers. Before the um, O line coach with the chop blocking and all that stuff, cut blocking where they, you know, they they had everybody you know on their heels um, with all that cut blocking they used to do. Um, I forgot the offensive line coach's name, but before all of that, for Shanahan, he took them to three Super Bowls in four years with a roster that. When you look back on it, man, the eight and eight would have been their ceiling. And you would have been happy with eight and eight. And we need, and Shador, that's why I say Shador has to win games, man. It doesn't matter. You still have to win games, man. You still got to win games. I don't care what's going on. I don't care how bad the offensive line is. I don't care that the defensive line, man. The defensive line is, is is dreadful. The offensive line is dreadful. I don't care. You've still got to win some games, man, Shador. And um, maybe you should call John Elway, man, and talk to him, man. You talk to Tom Brady, I see, but maybe you should call John Elway because he knows a lot about being in your position with a bad roster. I mean, I don't think um, Brady ever had a bad roster. I think they had um, some years where they didn't have the best skill position guys at certain positions, but the roster overall, the lines were awesome, and the, the linebackers were great. The corners were always all-world. Um but you gotta, you gotta, um, <laughs> yeah, man, you gotta win some games, Shador. 
regardless of what's going on. You have to win some games. Get in the comment section. Hit the like button. Peace. I'm out of here.